If you were to ask me what show shaped my childhood, I'd probably list off stuff like Spongebob, Pokemon, Ben 10, Dragon Ball Z, and regular show. But among that list of series is another much older show that I watched when I was far younger. And arguably, this show might be the most peak of them all. It's called Arthur. This children's show aired in 1996 and only just recently ended in 2022. It centers around Arthur, an 8-year-old kid as he goes about his day-to-day -day life. It explores various themes and scenarios that kids that age might face, and I've gotta say the writing for the show is quite good. There's episodes dealing with serious topics such as cancer, and even an episode that I'm pretty sure is an allegory for 9-11, though my pea-sized second grade brain have really picked up on it. Right away you can probably guess one interesting aspect of the show, and that's the fact that despite the pretty realistic setting, the characters are all anthropomorphic animals. You've got Arthur's best friend, Buster the Bunny, Francine and Muffy, two monkeys, Mr. Ratburn, which you can probably guess what he is, and this gender dog guy. Just by looking at these characters, you can probably understand what animal they're supposed to be based off of. That's true for almost every member of the cast, all except for one group. That is, ironically enough, Arthur and his family. If you were to show the average kid, heck, if you were to show the average adult this character and ask them what animal it's supposed to be, Chances are they'd get it wrong. A monkey? A bear? A mouse? Well, no. Actually, he's supposed to be an aardvark. For those of you guys who don't know, aardvarks are these small mammals found throughout Africa. They kind of look like anteaters, sharing their long nose and tongue, and even their insectivorous diet. But in reality, they're more closely related to elephants. I've got a whole video on that group of animals that you can check out once you're done with this one. But then, you might be asking, if Arthur is supposed to be an aardvark, then why on earth does he not look like one? Well, my dear viewers, prepare yourself, as I'm about to show you something that some of you with weaker constitutions might not be able to handle. This is your final warning, as we're now going to be showing you Arthur's original design in 3, 2, 1... That's right, Arthur was indeed initially modeled after a real-life aardvark. This is an image of the first book in the series that the television show was based off of, Arthur's Nose, released all the way back in 1976, all the way in the prehistoric times. What a nose it is. What a horrid thing. Of course, this all leads into another question. And that is, what happened to this design? Well, lucky for me, the Arthur wiki's got my answer. After looking through the various covers of these children's books over the years, you can notice a gradual reduction in the shape of his nose and an overall softening of his harsh, animalistic features. Arthur's Eyes, released three years after the original book, shows a far more palatable design. The long nose is still there, but Arthur is wearing a much more friendly expression and has the early prototype of his trademark yellow sweater. The 1982-1985 books, Arthur's April Fool to Arthur's Tooth, is where I can see another stride toward our modern Arthur design. The long proboscis of Arthur is more of just a long head now. <laughs> oh, look at the top of his head! <laughs> the long face Arthur remained in the public until about 1989 with Arthur's birthday, which I believe is where Mark Brown, the author, landed on Arthur's contemporary design. Part of my assumption is just based on the fact that this book never got a re-released cover according to the wiki, but even still, you can see that our boys finally got his cute rounded face. And he retained this face for the rest of the Arthur's Adventure book series all the way into the animated show. So with that brief history settled, we still have to ask, why? Well, when I was a kid, I heard that it was because the original design was deemed too scary for children. And can you blame them? It's pure nightmare fuel. But apparently that's not the case. According to Mark Brown's own blog post, I've been drawing Arthur for about 40 years, and the more I drew him, the rounder his head became. His nose got shorter, and he began to look more human. Over the years, I got to know Arthur better and better. He and all the characters I write about in Arthur's world came from real people I grew up with, and he was a child. I think that's one reason so many kids can identify with my characters. And in an interview with the Dallas Morning News, he says something similar. It wasn't anything I did on purpose, I just drew him over 35 years and he got more lovable. To me, this reads as Mark Brown just finding his style over the period of drawing these books. And honestly, it makes sense. When artists begin drawing, they often do so by referencing other photos. In the case of Arthur's nose, it's clear that Mark Brown heavily referenced the real-life aardvark, leading to the atrocity on screen now. But as time went on, more elements of his own style became infused into his character design leading to the character we love today. 
You know, I wonder, was this redesign really for the better? I know that I've spent the last few minutes just talking about how bad this thing was, but I wanted to go deeper into this Arthur lore by reading the first book, and doing so left me feeling mixed. The story starts out with Arthur feeling bad about his goofy looking nose. Whenever he was sick, he looked like some beaked reindeer, and at school it was an even bigger nuisance. It stuck out when he was playing hide and seek, and the darn thing always poked Francine in the back of the head. Though, let's be honest, assuming these kids got assigned seating, this is probably on the teacher. And of course, all these kids naturally made fun of how dumb his dumb nose looked. Look at poor Arthur, he just keeps on doing these sad sniffles. Then Arthur gets a bright idea. If his nose is such a hindrance in his life, he'll just change it. You sure this book wasn't written for the Korean audience? So he decides to go to our rhinologist to get rhinoplasty. As I had hoped, the rhinologist is a literal rhinoceros. She lets Arthur sample all sorts of noses, including this giant elephant nose. Now at this point, there's no way this rhino lady wasn't gaslighting the kid. Like, he came here to deal with his big nose, so why would you think giving him a bigger nose would fix his worries? Meanwhile, all the other kids in this class are waiting outside. Some of them wonder how his new nose is gonna look, and others even wonder if he'll leave them once he gets a better looking nose. I can definitely relate to this, as I often wonder if my fat friends would leave me for the cooler kids if they ever lose weight. But to everyone's surprise, Arthur comes out looking no different. He decided not to change his nose. In the end, he realized the grass only looked greener on the other side, and that he loved his nose just the way it was. Francine still said she wanted to change her seed. Bro, this kid always has to ruin a good moment. Talk about an instigator, man. After reading the story, I got a better understanding of Arthur, and I feel just a little bit bad for making fun of his nose earlier. For a lot of younger kids, it's very common to see them deal with their own insecurities. And as kids can be very blunt to each other given their age and lack of social etiquette, you'll often see kids pick on each other by calling on aspects of the way they look. I already know if I was an 8 year old looking to bully Arthur, I'd start by calling on his giant sniffer. So in a way, I wonder if maybe it'd have been better for Mark to keep Arthur's nose the way it was. Sure it's a gigantic anatomical travesty, but we still let people with these haircuts walk around without being bullied, so what's the harm in a big nose? In all seriousness, it'd be nice to have a children's mascot that isn't traditionally cute or appealing design-wise. Maybe it'd teach kids to look more on the inside or something like that. But in the end, I'm just kinda rambling. Big nose, small nose, Arthur still remains one of the most goaded icons of TV. And uh, to be honest, in children's media in general, it's something I'd happily show my kids if I ever have them. Thank you guys for watching this deep dive into the evolution of Arthur's design. This is a bit of a more unconventional type of video for my channel, but if you want me to cover these types of subjects more often, let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.